thinking about moving to Alaska? Have you fallen in love with the natural scenery or perhaps the wildlife and you're looking to purchase a home here? Before you do, there are a few things I would recommend before you plan a move here to Alaska. I had purchased a few homes here. I've sold a few homes. I did some by um, FSBO or some I did by a realtor. And I wanted to share some tips with you to avoid any potential issues that can arise after a home purchase. And if you watch my other videos, you know that I like giving advice or help people save some money while visiting Alaska. If you're new here, thanks for watching my video and please hit that subscribe button. It's free to do and helps my channel to grow. There's lots to cover, so let's get started. In this chart for a home buying process, I would switch the first and second step um, because you want to get pre-approval with a bank or a mortgage lender so that you know what you qualify for before you even contact a real estate agent or a realtor. Make sure you have a good credit score to get the best interest rate for a home loan and then there are several important things that you do not do once you find a home and you begin the home closing process. Um, you don't want to take out other loans or start moving money and stuff like that. And then um, part of the viewing properties in Alaska, I'm going to show you how to do that properly just Google Alaska MLS which is Alaska multiple listing service and then that brings you to the website alaskarealestate.com now you can narrow your search um, anywhere in Alaska go to find a property advanced search and let's say this is your region so Anchorage and then Mat Mat Matanuska Susitna is like the valley um, Big Lake, Chickaloon, that's where you're going to find Palmer, Wasilla. A lot of the homes are in the Wasilla area. And so um, for this example, but we just call it the Valley, Matanuska, Susitna, or we say the Valley. Okay, so let's say in Anchorage, you want to look for a home that has at least a two car garage and um, two bedroom home. And it's going to show you 121 results. So let's say you wanted to find something in the southeast Anchorage. Um, preferably, I would pick southeast or southwest of Anchorage. That's just me, my preference. And then it's going to give you a whole list of homes right there. And you can just click on them. Obviously, we didn't do a price limit so let me show you how to modify that let's say you go to the bank and you get a loan um, and there you qualify up to I don't know let's just say six hundred thousand of course let's keep it below that though you want to find something not go for the max price so there's going to be your home choices and you can just click on any one of them and um, this home was built in 1977, so it's nearly 50 years old, but it is in a good neighborhood in Southeast Anchorage. Um, has gutters, which is a good thing. A home inspector once told us that uh, you want to have a home with the gutters to get the rain or the water away from just dripping in your house into the foundation. So that was a good tip from him. So this home, um, nicely remodeled even though it's nearly 50 years old and I like that they left the fridge because sometimes you find homes without a fridge or washer and dryer because the previous owner is taking them so I would use that and negotiate the price down um, but right now we're kind of still in a seller's market so leaves little room for negotiation on but again that's an option We've used that in the past, I've bought several homes, I've sold several homes, I've sold them by FSBO, I've used Realtors, um, so just wanted to share these advice and tips on to you. And the one thing I'm looking for is, uh, okay, washer and dryer, and then this is like the boiler heating system, yeah, it's baseboard heat. Uh, most homes are forced air furnace and nice garage space. Okay, 
So if you like a home, um, see this Alaska MLS number 23-4183. If you really like a property, fine, I would get that MLS number because there's a way you can also search by it. So you could see, if, if you don't find it, you could see that it had sold. So 234183, and I'll show you that right now. Let's do a quick search. 234183. Search. And there's the home that you were looking for. You can also, um, let's say you want to do a new search and you want to find something out in um, the valley, like Willow. You can say include surrounding areas. And let's say you want to find a home <clears throat> that is, um, show additional options. Let's say you want to find a home like a cabin. So recreation cabin. And there's 23 results. Now most homes are not going to have a garage or most cabins out in that area. Um, some will, but that's going to reflect in the price being higher. There's a list of cabins or homes that are like cabins, recreation. If you were interested, like you see a lot of those reality shows like um, I guess a lot of people are in, interested in off-grid living. It's kind of not really off-grid. It's like off the highway um, type cabins. And again, that can just give you an idea of homes. Oh, they got a nice big wood stove. Now, I can do a whole separate video just on off-grid living alone, cabin living. Um, we've owned homes, we've owned a cabin, and I can do a whole separate video, so please comment if you're interested in that because there is a lot of tips and advice um, on off-grid living or cabin living, having a cabin in general in Alaska. So yeah, Alaska MLS is your way to search for, properly search for a home in Alaska. Um, by finding a property with advanced search. You can also do a map search. And let's say you wanted to find something. So Palmer's this way, coming from Anchorage, Wasilla, Houston, Willow. That's where we looked at a cabin. The uh, couple that does the um, YouTube channel Simple Living Alaska that's where their cabin is off of the highway so it's not really off-grid but I know they bought another property um, anyhow let's say we are interested in Willow so you use this hand to move around and then let's get a square and you're probably gonna see more homes in the valley because a lot more people um, choose the valley because they can get a home with a little more land and then from there you would just click on let me see you can click on a, a home and it's gonna yeah this is almost half an acre so most people um, that want more land live out in the valley and they do the 45 minutes at one hour commute to Anchorage for work or you'll see like a lot of the slope workers also live out in the valley um, yeah fairly new a ranch home and and I like the fact that this home has a ceiling fan in it a lot of homes um, if you've seen my other video uh, how to plan a trip to Alaska. I do mention that homes in Alaska do not typically have air conditioning. So there is no AC, so be very careful if you rent an Airbnb, especially in the months of June and July. It can get super hot in Alaska, believe it or not. And so even if you have a stand-up fan, it could just be blown around warm air in the home. Um, so I do like the fact that it has a ceiling fan and um, fairly newer home in the Matsu in Wasilla. 
So feel free to look around at photos and information, click on different homes, but this is the proper way to look at properties um, through Alaska MLS, alaskarealestate.com, whether it's a home, a townhome, condo, um, a cabin, land, this is what you're going to use to search. And even if you do hire a realtor, um, I personally have also looked on my own, not just what the realtor thinks might be a good fit for me. And you can search by different towns. Um, the valley is the Matsu Borough, or like um, Seward, Soldotna, Kenai, that's all in the Kenai Peninsula Borough. So this gives you an idea of where to look. One huge factor in buying a home in Alaska is to deal with snow. And this past year, we had a huge snow record in Alaska. So if you're up for shoveling all the time, be prepared for that. Um, Anchorage does have a law that you can't shovel the snow out of your driveway and put it onto the main road. Really, really dumb law anyway, um, or you can get fined. So one thing I kind of like about Anchorage is um, townhomes or condos with an HOA, the Homeowner Association, because they remove the snow, they mow the lawn, and um, my preference is that's what I like. I mean, you pay a monthly due. Some of them can be like $200, $300 a month, but at least they mow your lawn, they take away the snow, uh, like this example for this condo in Independence Park in Anchorage um, for a little over 300 a month. They will do your ground maintenance. They also take away the trash and it covers the water bill. Um, so that's a huge thing to think about when living in Alaska. And then one thing um, I wanted to also point out is if you found a property you were interested in and like I showed you, write down the number, uh, the MLS number to search. But if it doesn't show up, that means it's in pending status. However, if you still wanted to find out information, I would also write down the address of the property because then that's when I would use sites like Zillow or Realtor.com and put in that address and you can find the old listing. Um, this condo is in a good neighborhood. It's priced um, at a, at a good price for this market so I wouldn't doubt if it gets sold very quickly so like I mentioned we are gonna go and search by the MLS listing number for that townhome that I had just mentioned two three four two six eight and I'd be really surprised. Yep, see, no results. It means it has been sold. So um, writing down the address, what I would then go do is go to like realtor.com and type in the address 10242 Jamestown Drive. And it was number 7J. So that's when I would use sites like that because it can tell you, it can show you that old listing even though it's taken off Alaska MLS. Um, and that's where you would find the property if you still wanted to look at it. Um, because sometimes these properties can be in pending status and then the deal falls through. You know, maybe the the borers couldn't come through at the end, and so the property goes back on the market. So um, this would be a way to still look at an old property that has sold if you wanted to get pictures and so forth in it. So I just wanted to show you that that way as well. Things to consider when buying a home in Alaska, unlike those silly reality shows, don't look at just three homes and then buy one. You actually want to look at at least 10 homes or more know the location. Um, if I was interested in a property, I would actually probably go to the neighbors in that neighborhood. If you see them walking on the sidewalk, kind of ask them, hey, what's the deal with this house? Or do you know why they're moving? It could be in a foreclosure, or maybe they found issues with the house, or just didn't like the neighborhood, or didn't have like sidewalks to walk their kids or their dogs, so forth. Um, that's one thing that I would do. 
And then you want to think about the location. What area do you want to live in? A big city like Anchorage or Fairbanks further north or in Wasilla, the valley, commute from uh, to your job to Anchorage, maybe live in the valley or so forth. Once you narrow down a place, um, think about the areas like hillside. You're going to get a lot of wind in Anchorage plus a lot of snow in the winter time. And then also think about the size of the home and all the ground maintenance that comes with it. Besides cleaning the home, you're going to have to mow the lawn, shovel snow, or have somebody plow your driveway, um, or hire somebody to mow your lawn. And then think about disposing of those leaves if you have a very big uh, lawn. Does that mean extra baggage fees for your, your dump fee? So you got to think about things like that. Heating the home, um, electric bills, all utilities go up when you have a bigger home. And a lot of people don't think about the property tax involved. So you find a home and you look at the price and you think of what you can afford for a monthly payment. But there's a way to search in Anchorage and Wasilla to look at the property tax. For instance, um, buying a home and then looking at the property tax, it could be about four to six thousand dollars a year. So that, if it was six thousand a year, that could mean an extra five hundred payment added to your mortgage payment per month. Because normally property taxes are um, put in with your mortgage payment. So think about that uh, factor as well. Then you want to think about your utilities, especially water. In Anchorage, a lot of the homes are on a, um, the city water, but homes on Hillside and out in the valley uh, are usually on a, a private well and a septic tank for their own water and sewer. So that means you'll have to get a water softener more than likely. Um, sometimes wells can go bad. I've seen that happen before with several people, whether it was Fairbanks, whether it was Wasilla or Anchorage. So before buying a home, I would test the water. Bring a bottle of water or some kind of canister because you might end up having to purchase a whole new well if, you're, if the well collapsed or the water's bad. And that can add thousands to that cost for water. You also want to think about your cell phone coverage. Does your carrier work in that area or do you need to um, switch cell phone companies? Same with the internet. Who provides the service there? And especially if you work from home or if you plan to stream movies or use the internet a lot. And then I would look at mailboxes because if there's an issue with theft in your area, you might have to go purchase a P.O. box just to have your mail kept more safely or look for those homes or townhomes that have the mailbox system, the lockbox. If you plan to get an alarm system, do your research. Don't get into a long-term contract in case you don't stay in the home for three to five years because some of them vary. They can be 90 something a month, whereas some can be simply $14.99 a month or a smaller fee than that. Um, depending on what kind of alarm system you get or some people just get a dog but then you might have you're gonna have vet bills more than likely or get something cheaper where um, it's like a motion sensor in case somebody comes into your yard but there's no monthly fee it's just a one-time fee or a door stopper so there's many different alarm systems you just have to look over which works for you even just a simple thing is having your keys by your bedside in case you have to grab them, hit the panic button, notify your neighbors that something's wrong or somebody broke into your house. In Alaska, I think about, you know, the weirdos or serial killers that have lived here and hurt people or kill people. Um, if you want to Google Israel Keys, for example, when he looked for victims to break into their home, he looked for... Um, couples that didn't have a dog or a security system. Officials say Keyes traveled to Vermont 18 months ago planning to kidnap and murder someone at random. They say he was looking for a house with an attached garage and no security. And I don't bring up these things to scare you but just to make you aware so that you can protect yourself and sleep peacefully at night in your home. In Alaska, you're going to have mosquitoes, no surprise there, but it's usually more of bothersome in rural areas than in city type living. Same goes for the moose and wildlife. Um, more heavily treed areas in a city like hillside or more rural areas out in the valley and, and so forth, you're going to have probably moose or bears to watch out for.
We get a few reports of bears coming out of dens in March, but in general, April and May are the two months where we start uh, picking up a lot of reports of both brown bears and black bears emerging from dens. Hungry with their noses to the ground. It's best for the public to start putting away bird feeders, uh, make sure there's no attractants outside and available for bears to get into. Fish and Game says if you encounter a bear on your property, it's best just to keep eyes on it. So moving to Alaska is a really um, something you should really think over. Be, you know, think about the location. Do you want to live in the city? Uh, do you want to live on hillside? Well, gosh, that means more wind and snow. Do I really want to deal with shoveling a lot of snow in Alaska in my home? Um, shoveling snow, getting snow off the vehicles. Alaska's a big state, but there's a lot of factors to think about and I wanted to put this video together before you even purchase a home. Again, I would probably rent before buying if I wasn't familiar with the city, at least for a year minimum, um, because you can avoid some big headaches later down the road and instead make your purchase an enjoyable and smart one. And thank you for watching my video this far. Here is one last bonus tip for you. Before purchasing a home in Anchorage, I would double check the seismic map and make sure um, you have the realtor research the history so that the home you're purchasing had not been an earthquake um, because we did have a big earthquake November 30th of 2018, which was very scary to go through. And our home was safe in Anchorage but some neighbors nearby had some structural damage. I know some homes in Jewel Lake area that had some structural damage, as well as some homes in Eagle River and in Wasilla. So um, be careful on where you're purchasing a home in Alaska. Thanks for watching my videos. I sure appreciate it. And please feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to get back to any questions as quick as I can. Again, thank you.